Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel and thanks for checking out this video. Today I'm going to be talking about the Panasonic S5 as somebody who's been using the Panasonic S1H for over a year now. So I've already made a video about the Panasonic S1H and you can check that one out in the cards. And please like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this one. I finally got to try the S5. A lot of people that were commenting on my S1H review were telling me that I should look into the Panasonic S5 and it was definitely worth checking out. So the main focus of this video is going to be giving my first impressions of the Panasonic S5. And I'm not going to go super into detail about every spec of the camera, but I will be making some comparisons between the S5 and the S1H. Before we get started, just a quick disclaimer. Panasonic loaned me the camera and hired me to make a separate video, but it's not this video. If you'd like to check out that video, I will leave it linked below. It's more of a specific review of the S5. Even though I was hired to make that video, all the opinions I express are still my own. Without further ado, here are my thoughts and opinions about the Panasonic S5 after using it for about a week. The first thing I want to talk about are the physical aspects of the camera. And when I first got the camera, I was really surprised to see how small it actually was. This is where a lot of differences between the S5 and its big brother come into play. I loved how easy it was to set up. It was a lot like my S1H, but with fewer options. I do really like the size of the S1H for shooting video, but it was nice to have a smaller camera that was just as powerful. But the smaller size of the camera does come with some trade-offs. Most of them are forgivable, but some of the things they chose to omit are things that I raved about previously on the S1H. I really love the top LCD or status screen on the S1H because it showed you all the information of importance at a moment's notice, and it could even be toggled to show you audio meters, which was great for when you were running audio into the camera to record interviews. Another thing I noticed the S5 was lacking was the full-size HDMI port. I've always hated micro HDMI cables. They break easily, and if you ever need one in a pinch, they're not easy to find. With a smaller camera comes a smaller battery, which means worse battery life and going to the S1H from the A7S II, I really enjoyed the good battery on the S1H. With the S1H, I found I don't have to worry about battery life. And while the S5 isn't nearly as bad as the infamous A7S II batteries, I still don't feel the same comfort that I do when I'm using my S1H. Moving on to the capture and recording aspects of the S5, I was afraid that it would be lacking in a lot of these features, but I found most of the core features were there. They even kept the ability to switch shutter speed to shutter angle, which shows that Panasonic is really keeping video users in mind. I also noticed another one of my favorite features carried over from the S1H, which is the dual native ISO. I didn't really get to test this one out because I was shooting in daylight, so I mostly kept my ISO at 640 and raise it to maybe 1600 a few times. It is slightly different in the S5 because it's an automatic switch where on the S1H you're able to choose between low and high circuit. Seeing that this camera was half the price of my S1H, I was afraid it would get watered down, but I noticed after updating the camera, most of my favorite recording options were available. It doesn't have any of the intraframe or all eye codecs available on the S1H, which isn't a huge deal to me. I don't use them that much on my S1H, but I would prefer to have them included. The S5 can shoot 4K up to 60 frames per second, but it's 3840 by 2160, whereas on the S1H you can shoot 4096 by 2160. It can shoot cinema 4K at 60 frames per second, but you'll have to shoot in 8-bit. And personally, I would rather shoot in 10-bit and have the greater bit depth than the little bit of extra resolution you would get. There were a few things I was hoping that they would have improved by now, seeing that the camera is a year newer. As I mentioned earlier, I did get a lot of feedback on my S1H video, particularly about the autofocus. And as I mentioned in that video, it's not terribly important to me, but it is something I can appreciate seeing that I usually am working by myself or in a smaller crew. Some people were saying that the autofocus on the S5 was supposed to be a lot better, but I can't say that I noticed much of a difference while using it. I was mostly using the 16 to 35 F4 from Panasonic, which is already supposed to be quite a bit better at autofocus but the camera still did struggle in many scenarios where most other cameras would do fine. I will have to do some more testing, but I can say right off the bat that I'm not thrilled with autofocus performance, even with face detection on. Again, it's not something that's terribly important to me, but I was hoping to see some sort of improvement. All in all, I am super impressed with this camera, especially considering that it's half the price of the S1H. I found most of the important features that I use from day to day are there, and it's just in a smaller form factor. 
I'm gonna have to do some more research and testing before I can fully form my opinion about the S5. But my initial thoughts are if you like the S1H, you don't need 6K recording or the all eye codecs, you can save yourself $2,000 and get pretty much all the other features. I wanna make a video testing out the lens that you could buy with the S5 for a couple hundred extra dollars, as well as testing how the camera functions as a photography camera. So if you wanna see more videos about the S5 and cameras like it, make sure you subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.